everyone. I'm Norm Shrine with Information Radio, and I'm with Coach Dave Miller, head coach of the Fairmont Firebirds. And we are actually in mid-July, a little bit ahead of football season, but not for the, the players. You guys get started early, right? Yep. Um, so first of all, with your football team, what do you typically accomplish mid-March to the end of the school year that you weren't able to do this year because of the pandemic? And how were you able, uh, through either online Zoom type meetings, uh, keep in contact with the players? Well, you know, number one, the, the first part of that, it, it's, you know, they, they pulled the rug out from under us, you know, for 10, 11 weeks there. And that's tough because normally what we're doing is we've got our off-season program going in full swing at that point. Uh, we finished up really the first phase or winter, and then they shut us down right before we went to spring break. So uh, we'd have been getting our transitioning, having our winter athletes coming in, spring athletes going out. Um, and, and there's a lot of, you know, besides strength and, and conditioning that we're working on, there's a lot of team building stuff. You know, a lot of people look at it and think, well, you know, I've, I've heard this excuse a million times that I'll lift on my own and, and all this other stuff. Well, that's great, but you're not getting the team aspect of working with your buddies and then there's a lot of mental toughness things that come from being in there with in that environment, you know, having coaches on you, you know, from the start to finish when you're in those workouts. And uh, I think we missed that. I, it really, um, that and some guys that just didn't have the opportunity uh, to get where they needed to and have, have access to weights and things. We lost some, you know, definitely three weeks of, of good work there. But, um, you know, we got to make up for it. And uh, that's that's where we are now. So. Okay, and as things stand now, what could you tell us about the schedule for this season, especially in terms of the non-conference? Well, we, we're going, uh, you know, obviously we have our altar uh, yearly uh, match with them on Thursday night, uh, August 27th, uh, and then we have Lakota East again, uh, finishing up a home and away with them. They'll be at our place. Uh, then we picked up uh, CJ, uh, which I think is going to be great, you know, for both schools. Uh, we play down there, uh, and then we're into pretty much our G-Walk schedule after that, so. So let's go to the team. Offensive line looks like some rebuilding is needed with the loss of first uh, teamers, uh, Joel O'Brien and uh, Max Rell. How will it look different this year, uh, led by upcoming uh, senior Brian Kendrick, who made second team all GWAC last year? Well, you know, we, we are. We replaced four seniors, uh, you know, the, the J uh, Jacob Feltner, um, uh, Jacob Woski, um, Joel O'Brien. Um, gosh, I just... I, myself here. Oh, oh, Luis Bede, yeah, who made tremendous pro progress during the year. So those four guys, that, that was a, that's going to be, you know, there were three, uh, two and three year starters, and Luis was a was a letterman, you know. So um, it's going to be hard to replace those guys. Um, but you know, we've got a good young group. Uh, there's a lot more competition. You know, I think that last year there was no doubt we had some guys that could play and guys that you know, really couldn't. They were they were uh, just not ready. So I think we have a lot more guys that can play. They have the potential to play. Uh, it's just a matter of them realizing it. Okay, at quarterback, uh, Malik Hillen threw 17 times last season, uh, but with he and Ted Gank rushing for 1,400 yards, how do you expect his passing attempts to look this season? Well, you know, it, it's. I told him if, if we're going to throw the ball, um, they have to complete them. You know, I just, I'm not comfortable with – uh, with our offense, the way it's, it works, we have to stay on the field. We have to move the chains, you know, stay on schedule. And if we're throwing incompletions, I'm not real comfortable with that situation because the clock stops. And, you know, so we, they uh, – and I'll say to, to his credit, and, and a bunch of guys went out and uh, – probably when they weren't supposed to you know they were supposed to be indoors but they were going out and they were working on it so you and it shows this summer um, I think our passing game is, is ahead of where it's been for since the time we've been here so uh, we will possibly put it in the air more but you know we're going to do what we do it, it's uh, the, the philosophy it fits our whole team uh, we're trying to really take care of our defense and um, if you're throwing a bunch of incompletions that's not doing it so um, that's the uh the, the thing I put on them is as long as we're completing passes, more will be coming. We did that against Centerville last year. We had, you know, first couple we completed, and we ended up throwing four times against them and completed all of them. So um, we don't have to throw a lot. We just need to be really, really efficient when we do it. Uh, and where does uh, junior Keon Wright fit into the offense this year? Uh, since he made a big plays uh, last year at wide receiver and running the ball. Well, he's going to fit in all over the place, including quarterback. You know, so he's he's been working quarterback all summer. Uh, so really, in my mind, we have two quarterbacks right now. And, and, and Dylan Krieger, as a sophomore, has really done a good job. Um, I feel very comfortable with our quarterback position at this point. Uh, any of those guys can really go in and run our offense. You know, we've never 
since I've been here, we haven't had that. You know, so that's a really good thing. Keon is, is a you know he's a good athlete. You know, so he's going to play running back. He might play some wide out. Uh, he might even go over to the other side of the ball. I mean, I think in the, the world we're in, if they let us play, um, you just don't know. I mean, we, we you have a, a kid contract the the virus and, and he's out so you got to be prepared we talked about that this morning as coaches uh, just having be having the flexibility of having a bunch of guys know a lot of things and uh, how about your overall look at the defense having to adjust for key losses in uh, Garrett Trey Baker as well as uh, Jacob Dotson even the old holder Overholzer. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, we lost a lot of seniors over there, um, especially up front. In our secondary, we have most of our guys back, you know, so that's good. But, um, yeah, that, that's uh, we have, have holes to fill there. Uh, but, again, the guys have worked hard. Um, you know, the effort this summer, we've, we've averaged about 80, 90 kids per workout, you know, so um, there's competition over there, too. I, I think that a lot of, you know, once you start getting that, where, where there's a lot of guys that can play and you're competing for that job, it brings out the best in you. So I'm not worried about it. You know, Trey Baker being a four-year starter, geez, that, that's uh, – you're not going to replace that. I mean, that, that guy, um, that's why he's going to play college football. But, uh, you know, Garrett, he was a three-year starter. And the other guys you mentioned, they were great. But, um, you know, the, the idea is that your young guys step up and, and you know, I'm next. You know, I'm up next. So. All right, and uh, before we go into this season's team, last year you started 0-5. However, you finished the season winning four of the last five games, with your only loss in that stretch coming in overtime to Wayne. Uh, what started working midseason that enabled the big turnaround, other than good coaching, of course? Okay, well, I can tell you that. That's, that is the, the last thing that <laughs> made a difference there. But, um, you know, number one, the, the, and we knew going in, our schedule <laughs> last year, uh, those first five games, uh, you know, we had a state champion. Uh, we had every other team was a playoff team. Lakota East was was very sl- in Division One in the heart, one of the hardest regions in the state, no question. Uh, they were, I think, ninth. You know, so we played as tough a schedule as you could play at the beginning. You know, and I think that had a lot to do with that. We competed. Uh, we competed in every game. I mean, even the Springfield game. They're they're a you know state runner up or not runner-up, but a semifinalist, you know, and um, we're at a point where we're 21-7 with them and driving to make it 21-14. So, you know, we it was there. I mean, we had some tough losses that, that we lost by, you know, a touchdown or two, and, and uh, we were in those games, you know. So I think, uh, you know, it, it, it our, our kids' attitudes never, never wavered, you know, and that was the greatest thing about that senior class. Uh, that they just each week they came back to work, came back to work, and they didn't worry about what the record was. You couldn't tell, um, you know. So I think that had that was huge. You know, the, the leadership of our seniors, um, and then you know we just uh, I'm not going to say the schedule got easier because it, it didn't. We still played some really good teams, but um, it, it made us better. You know, and, and by the time we got there, we were ready to go and fortunate to pull off four of those wins. And you know, we had a close one there with Wayne and. Um, you know, turned out the way it was, but so. All right, and keeping things uh, on the positive side, you got a huge win against Centerville, first time since 1997. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us what it meant to the team and describe what it was like in the locker room after that game? I can imagine it was quite a celebration. Unbelievable. Uh, it's probably one of the greatest atmospheres I've ever been a part of. Uh, just a, a catharsis. I mean, you have all that pent up 22 years and you know, I was part of some of that because you know, I was on the other side but um, you know it was huge uh, to get that monkey off our back I guess you'd say um, the guys really I, you, that senior class that's something no one will ever be able to take away from them you know no matter what the record said you know they they were the first team to beat Centerville in 22 years and there's some good teams Fairmont teams that came before them that didn't do that you know so um, huge for our program I, th- I think mentally you know I, I think they believe they can win anytime they go out I'm not sure that when I first got here they believed a whole lot you know and, and that's the biggest thing you got to get overcome that so in terms of whoever's on your schedule we can play with I think uh, that accomplished a lot of that Okay, now I'm not going to focus on the, um, the pandemic, uh, okay. but I have a um, question on um, how challenging has it been on this off season in comparison to other years? And well, you kind of touched on that a little bit on our first question. It's the 800-pound grill in the room, and, and I'll tell you, just I I just talked to our guys this morning. You know, it, it's uh, 
I understand, uh, you know, that, that it's, it's serious. I take it seriously, but I, I just hope that people understand how, how important it is for these guys to be able to go out here and play football. Um, I'm not sure that, that the powers that be really get that, uh, but uh, these guys put a lot of time and effort. Uh, it, it's, it's this way anyway with any football season for a limited opportunity to go out and, and really get your reward. You know, so for them to take that away from them uh, without seriously thinking through everything, I, I just, I scratch my head, you know, but it's been challenging. Um, I, I think um, there's a lot of pent up um, energy and, and emotion. Uh, that first workout we had June 1st, we had 90 kids here. They could not wait to get out. And, and we, our practices are tough. Our workouts are tough. You know, so this is not easy stuff they're coming to, but we've averaged about 80 kids this summer. You know, so I, I know that they just they they need that. Okay, and, and uh, you know them being pent up in in a in a room or a house for 11 weeks is not good. You know, so it's been I think it's been challenging to try to keep them focused on <clears throat> what you know control what you can control. You have no idea what tomorrow's going to bring. So, and it's a great life lesson. You know, it's, it, at some point in your life. Uh, you may be in circumstances like that, so you know. Hopefully, they're learning that from these practices and, and uh, camps and things. Um, that the, the stuff they can carry over uh, in their regular life, you know, when they get to be 40 years old or uh, 50 years old, whatever the case may be. But uh, hopefully, we have a season. I, you know, I just they put in a lot, so much time and energy, and uh, they need that. You know, the kids kids really need school. Need to be in school. They also need extracurriculars. Uh, those are huge. That's why we have them. So. And second, uh, will the players be wearing any kind of a cover over the face mask, or are there any changes to their equipment? No, and I, you know, we talked about it at one point. We we got together with our sports medicine uh, group, and I don't think they felt like that was as big of a deal. Now, at, at some point, if they say, you know, you're going to get a season if you do this, I'd be willing to put those on here. So they they uh, they had a company was out there selling face shields. We don't really let our guys wear those, you know. But if they they said you can have a season as long as you put these on, then they're going on our, our helmets. So. And after getting a year of experience under their belt, what are your expectations for backfield uh, featuring Hill and Gant and Wright after they accounted for over 1,700 uh, rushing yards and 14 TDs? Well, they should be pretty good based on that, the experience. But really, it's uh, we all know it's football. So what happens up front is is way more important to that. Um, those guys. You know, they should be the leaders of our team, and I, I think Tank Gant right now that has surfaced this summer, uh, really as a leader, uh, doing a lot of the, a lot of the little things right. Uh, but again, if, if if we're not getting it done up front, it really doesn't matter how good those are those guys are back there. Our offensive line is huge. Uh, the wideouts, you know, we get on the perimeter. Th those guys blocking in our running backs, they have to block. You know, so um, I think sometimes people get hung up on the flash and they don't understand. The game is one and lost in the trenches, and especially for us, the way we do things. So, but they're having that experience back there. Um, I'd be lying if I didn't say that was important. You know, especially a quarterback. That's that's huge. Uh, now, defensively, replacing several key players is going to be challenging, to say the least. Uh, no one player more than Trey Baker. How do you go around replacing a player who gave you so much as a player and as a leader? You don't. <laughs> it's like you just. Those are huge fill, shoes to fill. But I'll tell you the. the the crew that Coach McDonald has right now is done, doing a really good job. You have Jack Roncalli, Jacob Deglo, uh, Malachi Bowling's in the mix there, um, Tole, uh, Justin Tole. I mean, all these guys are ready to step up. And, and uh, uh, Colin McLaughlin, you know, so we have, it's not, those are all seniors I just mentioned too, except for Bowling's a junior. But, um, you know, there, there are guys there that can step up and, and you know, what, what you lose in a tray, you know, number one, he came in day one as a freshman and was kind of forced into the lineup, but uh, that experience, you know, four years is really hard to replace. You know, it's like knowing how to get yourself out of bad situations, how to take on blocks, the instincts that are involved. So we're, we're going to miss some of that, but the effort, um, I, I've seen no drop off there in the leadership, you know, from those guys. So I think we'll be fine. Okay, and with a few starting positions available this year, there have been have there been any players that uh, stepped up over the summer and caught your attention, or maybe a player we don't know about that's going to have a chance to shine? Well, I just mentioned one. You know, Justin Tolle. Um, <laughs> it's a funny story on him. He, he's uh, 
he's from the Congo. You know, he, he, I think he moved here maybe five years ago, but he came to our first workout. He saw football, and I think he thought it was soccer. <laughs> so he comes in, and, and he's, he's working out with us, and, and he looks like a football player, no doubt. But, um, you know, uh, <laughs> once he figured out how – last year he had to figure out how to play. Uh, but he's been working at our outside linebacker and looking really good this summer, uh, really into it. You can tell – just light years away from where he started out, you know, a year ago. So I would say him right off the right off the top. I already mentioned Jack Roncalli. You know, he was playing outside, uh, kind of a defensive end for us, um, and now has moved to linebacker. Uh, he's another standout to me. Uh, you know, um, Caleb Young in the secondary. Uh, that that kid is another kind of a 180 situation from where he was as a freshman uh, to really a, a team leader this year for us. Um, you know, so in the secondary, you know, um, I'd, I'd mention those three. I mean, there's others, um, but uh, right off the top of my head, those are three that, you know, just after today, I, they, they stand out pretty much all the time. Okay, and I realize you don't have a crystal ball, uh, but this season, I mean, it's going to pose a lot of challenges to you. Uh, I mean, as far as how many fans, if any, you can get in the stands, what kind of coverage you're going to have in the media, yeah. uh, or if you're even going to – play, but you had mentioned how important this is to the students to play, and how important to the schools as well, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, our, our athletic budget depends on it. Um, you know, it, it, football is our, our biggest gate, you know, with basketball right there with it. So, I mean, as far as the sports programs, it's absolutely huge. Um, so, hopefully, you know, things calm down and we've got an opportunity to do this. But I, I don't, you know, at that aside, um, I don't care if we play in front of nobody, uh, just to have those kids to have that opportunity. I just hope our, our policymakers understand. I don't know if they do. I, I really don't. I, I question, you know, I, I'm not going to name any names, I, but, uh, but I just question sometimes. It's like, do you really see big picture here <laughs> and see what this is doing to them? And I just hope they do the right thing in the end, you know, and, and I understand the challenges they're facing too, but, uh, man, is it, it is important. If we can get them out back on the field, uh, that's just a huge thing for them. And that's not just for Fairmont either. That's for any high school football program. Any high school for football program. Okay, Coach, we're grateful. Thanks for taking the time to me, and hopefully we'll be doing some more of these interviews prior to each game. That sounds great to me.